Hi everyone, Todd Adams here, ID Specialist with Merck Animal Health. Today we're going to go over unboxing and going over the basics of your new AWR 300. From powering up to reading your first tag, uh, and then we'll get into more specifics of how you can connect this reader to your tablet, your PC, or your specific device such as an Android, iPhone, etc. So let's get started. So we've gone ahead and we've unboxed our AWR 300. On the back side, we've got reader information, the model number, serial number, etc. Uh, we'll go ahead and power the reader up by simply pushing the green button in the middle. What it'll do is uh, it, it's fired up and it shows here we've got full battery. If in case you need to charge this reader, what we can do is take the, uh, the charging cable and what we're going to be careful to do is line up the arrow on the cable to the white hash mark on the reader. We're going to push this on and we're going to give it about a quarter turn to the right. And the little green lock shows that you've attached it correctly. What we're going to do real quickly is check our firmware version on our AWR. To do this, we go to our menu, we're going to go to Setup, and we're going to roll to the bottom where it says Device Info, green button, and we're going to go to our Firmware Info. Your reader should be version 1.45. Uh, if it is not, uh, please reach out to our ID, ID specialists or our, our tech service hotline, and we can provide that information for you. So now the reader's in kind of ready mode. Let's go ahead and read a tag. So we'll go, go ahead and put this in read mode. We'll see that counter countdown. And if you watch the end of the stick there, it changes from red to green, showing we had an affirmation of a read. And momentarily that tag number reads on the screen. Now that tag has gone ahead and stored itself in the memory. I'm going to start with reader setup and we have reader settings. So we'll go to reader settings. We've got an animal counter. We've got a read mode. As you saw, the countdown started at 10 seconds. This is where we might change that. Uh, we can do single read, continuous read, or we can put this into uh, automatic read, which is probably isn't used so much. Uh, continuous read lets you enable the reader and put it in read mode so you don't have to touch the button every time. So from here, we're going to go, I'm going to go back to the other menu. We'll go to the interface setup. Here's where our Bluetooth and our, our scale setup, we can, we can send this, uh, send this data from the reader to multiple scale heads. The Bluetooth is the one you might be more concerned with, getting it connected to your respective device. We've got Bluetooth device history. This would be all the past devices that this reader is connected to. The BT profile or Bluetooth profile is where we can set it into multiple Bluetooth modes. Um, from IAP, which is used most readily with the iPhone. Uh, HID and HID Smart. Actually, HID Smart turns this reader into a, what they call a virtual keyboard. So for a person that wanted to open a Excel spreadsheet on their computer and had the reader tied to their, uh, to their laptop, let's say, uh, with Bluetooth, this reader with a carriage return enables you to scan RFID tags onto an Excel spreadsheet with an automatic carriage return. So if all you wanted to do is create a list, you can put this reader in HID smart mode and it works pretty slick. For use with the basic iPhone, iPad, we're gonna leave it in IAP. Uh, this reader will then stay connected consistently with, with those devices. So we can get into the Bluetooth mode. 
we see master, slave, and Bluetooth off. So if we put the reader in master mode, all that means is the reader goes out and tries to pair with a device, such as a phone or a tablet. In slave mode, it's waiting for the device to find it. That makes sense. So in master mode, it takes control of scanning the room looking for a Bluetooth device, a device to uh, connect to. So we're gonna, for the sake of this demo, we're gonna leave it in master mode. So what we wanna do now is pair our AWR with our device. In this case, uh, th in this case, it'll be an iPhone. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna engage the Bluetooth through my settings on my phone. Uh, I'm gonna go to menu. I'm going to, oh, this looks like it already wants to pair. Ultimately, this is what you wanna see is two of the same pairing request numbers. So we can pair here and we can do hit the perform pairing here. And we're gonna wait just a second and you'll hear that little whoop-de-whoop -whoop that lets us know that we are connected right here, AWR 300 So we're now married these two devices together. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna find our AllFlex Connect app which I've got on toward the last pages of all my apps. And we'll go ahead and open that up. Since we've connected this device through the, through the Apple internal Bluetooth, and now our AWR 300 device shows up here, we're gonna go ahead and tap that. What we're doing here is enabling the AllFlex reader now to read into our AllFlex Connect application for data collection. So what we're gonna do with the AllFlex Connect app, we've got home, we've got connect, which we don't need to be concerned about because we're connected, we've got settings and we've got help. Basically, this is a quick down and dirty data collection program. It is not herd management software. It does no calculations. It simply gives you a mode to collect certain fields of information that you can export to Excel or a CSV file to be then imported into your respective herd management systems, okay? You would use AllFlex Connect when you don't have, uh, let's say the ability through your software company that let's say they don't have a handheld solution uh, and you may have to take a PC or something like that to the, to the shoot. Maybe guy doesn't want to do that. So this AllFlex Connect app can run as an intermediary between getting the number off the reader into your software. What we'll do here is we'll set up some basic data collection for the sake of time here. And we can customize multiple fields on here, but our basic fields will be the EID, VID or visual identification, monitoring through an NFC reader, which this is not. So let's go ahead and shut that off uh, since we're not dealing with any monitoring today. The TST or TSUs, which is your tissue sampling units. Those are the ones with the little barcodes on the end. And we're gonna catch a weight. The weight, unfortunately, we don't have a scale head here, but we can manually enter that data. Once we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and hit the check mark. We've got our list created here. And we're waiting to add our animal record data here, EID, VID, TSU ID, and our weight. So we'll go ahead, grab our reader. We're gonna go ahead and read a tag. And you'll hear the, hear the app respond, it received our RFID, we can go to VID, and this will prompt us to manually enter, let's say a visual tag number. In the case of the TSU, we can enter a flag number off the side, because unless you've 
unless you're using a barcode reader, you're going to have to enter just the, uh, the flag on the side of the tube. So let's call that maybe the last four digits of the RFID number, which was 8067. And our weight, we're looking at our scale head, and we got about a 790 pound steer standing here. So we're done. We're on to the next record. So real quickly, we're going to show you how to put your AWR into HID smart mode, which turns your reader into what's called a virtual keyboard. Uh, what we'll do is we will scan RFIDs onto our notepad on the, on the iPhone. So to do this, we'll go back to our menu. We'll go to setup. We will go to interface setup and we'll go to Bluetooth and we will go to Bluetooth profile. Oops, went past it. And from here, we'll move out of the iPhone mode to HID Smart. And we'll go exit. Now what happens here is when the reader button is pushed, the reader goes out and connects with the device for a short period of time. The tag is red and the reader disconnects with the device. Now you notice there's a time lag from the time I push the button to when it connects. The tag's red, reader disconnects from the device. The nice thing about HID Smart is being able to create lists rather quickly in any one of an application. If you wanted to email uh, a list of numbers and you had an email open, you could put the, put the reader in HID Smart and just scan a bunch of tags and they would flow into the body of your email. You hit send and they're gone. For time savings, working shoot side, you could use HID Smart because of the time lag between animal. Uh, for working high flow, where you're dealing with a lot of animals rather quickly, we probably don't want to use HID Smart. We will leave it in the IAP mode. To power your reader down after use, it will fall asleep on its own, maybe a minute or two. To power it down manually, we're going to push the down arrow button takes a couple seconds and it will switch off.